Hi everyone and welcome to the channel and today I'm going to be talking about advanced lofts and how to create them extremely quickly. The object that you see on screen was made in minutes. I created one single profile to create this loft. That's all I had to do, FreeCAD did the rest. I'm going to show you how to do that so you can create shapes such as this fin with an Aero 4 profile going through it very quickly. So I hope you're enjoying these videos and let's have a look how I did this. If you like what you've seen and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash paypal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone or at coffee via ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. So for this demonstration, we need a workbench called the Kerr Shape Workbench. Now this has a handful of tools in here. To install it, you come up to Tools and come to Add-on Manager. Within the Add-on Manager, we just search for curved shapes. Now there is another workbench called the Curse Workbench, but we're gonna be using this one here, Curve Shapes. You just install it, restart FreeCAD, and it'll be available in your dropdown. If it's not at the top, it will appear somewhere at the bottom. So when you're adding workbenches, it will appear in the list towards the bottom. We can reorder that by coming into Tools and coming into Customize and come into the workbenches and drag and drop the workbenches about in our list. Or we'll use the up and down arrows to put them in the correct places. You'll have to restart FreeCAD after closing to see them in the correct place. The tool we're going to be using is this tool here. So I'm going to create a new document. And this tool is the curved array. It creates an array and resizes the items in the bounds of the curves in the XY, XZ or YZ plane. To use it, we first need a profile. So I'm going to come over to the sketcher and sketch a profile along, say, the XZ plane and hit OK. Let's pretend we're creating something like an aerofoil. So for that, I need a profile. So this is going to be a wing. And we'll create a very rudimentary profile in here. So I'm going to connect up to this point and I'm using the B spline tool. You can use whatever tool you want. And I'm going to make something like this and connect back up. Done a bit of a bad job with this, so let's extend it out and just shape it. You would import the profile if you was using something like an aerofoil or if you was creating some kind of a loft, then you'll just sketch in what profile you want. Something like that. Let's close that and have a look what we've got. Now we haven't got any vertices on here except for this last one here. So I need something to attach the wing to. This allows me just to import the geometry into my top sketch, which I'm going to do in a moment, and makes it a bit easier on myself. Now I have sketched from the point of origin, so I come up to view and toggle axis cross. I have sketched from here. And if we look at the sketch, you can see that point is there, but we've moved off. So I'm just going to bring this in and connect these up with constant constraint and pull this one down. This just makes it a bit easier on me when I start sketching in the wing. So for the wing, we're going to create something known as a whole curve. This is the boundary that we want this profile to cover. Now we can create more than one of these. I'm gonna create one and then create another one after, after I've applied the array to it. Make sure nothing's selected, create a new sketch along the X, Y plane. So looking down from the top, you can see that this point comes in handy now after I create this profile. I can also import this point here by using the import geometry tool 
and coming in and importing this point. So I've got something to work with with a B spline. If this was any other geometry, lines, arcs, etc., then I'll be able to import that in. They have got multiple vertices there. But I just made it a lot easier on myself by attaching up the center point and the end point to this line. So I've got these two points. Let's create a boundary curve. I'm going to use a B spline again. So from the top, I'm going to connect up to this point. I've got the auto constraints on in the edit controls and the avoid redundant auto constraints. And I'm going to create some kind of wing in here. And this is not going to be the usual type of wing. I'm just going to make this a bit awkward to loft with. So I'm going to go for something like this. So we have this curvature in here. Now, if I was lofting this, I would have to create multiple profiles across here to cover all of this, and that would take time. What the Curve Shapes Workbench allows me to do is use this as a boundary curve. So I can take my profile, the first sketch I created, and we'll rename that to Profile, and this one as the whole curve or the boundary curve. I'll take the profile first, Control select the boundary and use this tool. Curved array. When I select that, it places all these profiles along this curve. And we can click on it and increase the amount of items to say 50 to cover the shape. So you can see how that's covered that there. And we've got all those profiles, and they've been aligned to this edge. Now, if you look to the side, you can see they're all the same size. And we can control this as well. If I look to the top, you can see how they've been placed within there. The one we have to be wary of is this one on the end, and we'll get to that in a moment. Before I create another curve, let's create this as a solid. So I can come over to the left and use a solid and set that to true. And you see we have a solid in there, but we've got a problem with this end. And this is where the offset comes in. Now I've got the offset end, so we can set this to whatever we want in here. And this will control the offset from the end and the beginning of the loft. So for instance, I've offset that by two, and you can see that's taken out that bulge there. But we do have a problem because the profile has just been fitted to this length, so it's the same thickness all the way through. That's changed this back from solid, from true to false. And you can see those profiles in there. Let's set the offset back to zero and add another boundary curve. So this time I'm going to control the height of these profiles. So I'm looking from the left or the right. And what we're going to do is create another sketch over in the sketcher. Make sure nothing's selected. New sketch. We're going to be creating the sketch along the YZ plane the YZ plane and OK that. So we've got that there. Let's come in and just hide the curved array. Come back to task. So now what we need to do is create another boundary curve or another whole curve in here. I'm going to create a B spline again and come in and connect up to this here, to this axis. And come over, and I'm going to select the endpoint, and come back 
and connect up. So we've created this curve. Now it's not in place, let's pull this out and place it. It's a bit hard with B-spline. We can control this via spreadsheet, but I'm going to place that around about there. Now really this should cross at the nearest point here. So this boundary curve will control the height of our profiles. Let's close that. So we have our boundary curve and our profiles. Let's delete the curved array. Let's rename this to height boundary. Let's come over to the Curve Shapes workbench. Make sure nothing's selected. Select the profile. Control select the boundary and then control select the other boundary and use the same tool, the curved array. We now got items within here and let's increase the item count and we can see what's happened. So we come in the items and we'll set this to something like 20. And you can see already how they've been restricted. Now, if I select right, you can see how they are fitted in this boundary curve. So you can see them all fitted in there. We come round to the top and select top. You can see the fit in there. Let's come over to the curved array and now make this solid and see what we have. So that's true. And you can see how it's been fitted in there. We've still got some problems over on this side and that's just to do with the offset. So to deal with that curved array and come in and just trim the offsets on the ends. So set that to five and the offset at the start. Let's make sure. So we've got a bit of a problem there and we can just trim that as well. Trim that off. Now you notice that if we work up When we get to the edge, we do get a bit of a problem regarding what it's loft to. So if we wanted to close this loft to the edge, then we need some way of closing it in there. So if I wanted to loft to say, make sure that this is all smooth going along here, then we have to take a different approach. And we'll show you that approach in a moment, but let's just work on this. So we have this shape in here, the curved array. And there's a few other things that we can do in here. We can set this as a surface if we wanted to. So that's true. So we look, we've got a surface in there. So if we wanted to do any surfacing, extending the surface out, pull the surface into other workbenches, we can do so. And this is one way of fixing this point in here as well. We can actually create a surface in here that covers this and allows us to repair this patch if we wanted a better transition in here. Set that back to false. We also have twist as well. So we've got some twist modifications in here. And the best way to see that if I set this to say a solid and use the twist and zoom out a bit we can add a twist to our loft. So we're twisting that around and it will twist up. Let's zero that out. We also have a twist which we can supply a list. So if we click on here, we can supply a list for each of those profiles. So let's reduce our profile count. I'm going to come into the items and set this to something like five. If we look now and set the solid to false, we should have five profiles in here. Come into the twist. 
and we're going to add the degrees that we want to twist around and add five of them in there and hit OK and click off. And you notice that we get a twist going through each of these profiles. Let's come back to our list and set one of them to something a bit higher. So this one is twisted 10 degrees and then we've got two, three, four and five degrees. So we can add a twist for each of these profiles, which can come in handy when we're creating such things as wings like this or even propellers. As well as adding a list for the twists, we can do this for the profiles as well. Let's remove those. So we've got five profiles, but we can position them with positions. Now this is a position from zero to one. So these are floating points and we can come in and set these, set zero, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 and one and hit OK. And you'll notice how the profiles are now spaced according to those positions. Let's clear that out. And also look at the distribution. At the moment we've got linear, so they're linear across there. They're all the same distance away. Let's increase this, the amount of items to say 20. And look at the distribution. So we've got a number of different ways that we can place these across here. If we look at parabolic we can see the difference in the profile distribution across the wing. And we've got a number of them in here that we can choose from. Let's cycle back to this problem here. We want to close this in a bit more fluid way. We could look at adjusting the side profile this one here and getting it as close to the edge as we can. But this will only get us so far. It may even cause some intersection errors if we try to adjust that too far. So at the moment we're quite close to that edge, but it's not enough. So what choices do we have? Well, the curves array is a compound object. So let's set this back to solid as false so we get all our profiles back. And let's come over to the part workbench. The part workbench has tools to convert compound objects to single objects. So if we click on the curved array and come up to the part and come down to compound, we'll see a splode compound. If we click that, we get a splode curve array folder in here. So this is a group which has all the individual profiles within. So this allows me to do a number of things. That's utilized some of the other workbenches to close this in a better manner. I can loft through all these profiles using the part loft which means I can add my own profiles in here. So we have our wing, we have our profiles. Now I want to create a loft across these. There are a number of options. And one of the options is I want to create a sketch here. So we're going to use the sketcher first to correct this. I'm going to select the last profile or the first profile in this case. And I want to create a sketch that's just in front of it. Let's come over to the sketcher to create our sketch. In here, we can select that profile and I'm going to create a sketch and I'm going to attach it by the inertial CS and hit OK. So we've been attached to that profile. You can see it there. Let's use the sketch view section so we can see where we are. I'm going to use a point 
So just create a point and place it on the sketch. Hit escape, click the point, and can convert that using this tool here, or sketch, sketch geometries, toggle construction geometry. It will turn white. That means it's now a normal piece of geometry and we can attach it to the center. Quincy constraint. And because it's been turned white, it will show up as a vertex. So created a vertex there. Because we've got that sketch, at the moment it's just sitting in the same plane as that last profile, this profile here. I want to take that sketch and I want to move it. And I'm going to use the attachment because it's attached and the position and look along the Z axis and I can move it along that Z axis there. And I'm going to move it up to that line which is about minus two, minus 1.9, something like that. We can type in there if we want. That's going to do me. And now I can actually use that in a loft. So let's come back over to the part workbench and click on our loft. I'm going to use the first sketch, which is that point. And now I can start selecting all of these profiles by going through. Well, first of all, I need to select that sketch and pass it to the right hand side for selected profiles. It's the first thing I need to do. And now I can select the next curved array element. And you can see it highlighted in green there as I click on it. Let's double click. Next one will be added. Next one. And you can see as I click on them, they're adding to the, the selected profiles on the right. I'm just going to do a couple. I'm not going to go through the whole lot. I'm going to hit OK. So we've lofted part of that wing up to that point there. And we've got a much cleaner finish to our wing. So you can see that there. So that's one way of closing that loft to a clean point. The other way, if I get rid of that loft, is to use the draft workbench. Let's come over to the draft workbench. And again, we're going to select the last profile. So zoom in, you can see the last profile there. I'm just going to leave that other sketch. So our very last profile, this one here. And we need to set the working plane. So I want to move the working plane up to this profile. This makes scaling a lot easier because we're going to create a clone and scale that down. To come up to the utilities and select working plane. You'll notice that the grid is now intersecting that profile. And it's sitting on that working plane. Let's come over and find that profile. So it's curved array zero. So you can see it sitting there. Make sure it's selected and then click the scale or up to the modifications and scale. It's going to ask for a point to scale this from. Now you can notice that the snapping is snapping to this. And if we go to the middle, we can see that middle point there because it's on the working plane is zero zero. So this is the local coordinate system of that working plane of that object. So I'm just going to zero these out. So make sure that we can take our finger off the mouse. We can start using the keyboard. We can see the scale, the local X is selected here. So we're going to enter zero, tab down, zero, tab down, zero, and hit enter. So we have centered on that center point. Now we can scale this. And what I'm going to do is create a copy. So this will create a copy of this profile. Matter of fact, let's uncheck that and do create a clone. So we're creating a clone of this. And set this to say 0.5. See how that's been scaled down, 0.5. Let's go further, 0.2. 0.1 and 
So we're creating a very small profile that we can move into position. 0.05, and there it is there. That's okay that. Our profile is sitting there, and we can click on the clone, the curved array clone there, use the placement, the position, and use the axis. In this case, it is the Y axis, and move that into position. So we're gonna move that forward into position there, and click off. So we've got a small profile there. That means we can use that during our lofting. So let's come back to the part workbench and use a loft and come down to that profile. Double click it to move it across. Let's give it some room. And then start using the other parts of the array. And just double tapping to get them across. So we've got all those in there and hit OK. So we've got all them all in there and we've lofted to that profile which sits just here. And let's come down, click on the loft and set this to solid as true. So we've created a solid profile. See there's no spacing in there. And we can come up, click on our group, press the space bar, and we've got our loft going across there. So this is good for such things as wings, fins for say windsurfing or kite surfing boards, awkward lofts. So when we do a normal loft with this, we would have to actually create all these profiles by hand all the way through here. If you see some deviation on here you can see we've got a bit of an unclean surface we've got some bumps and stuff in there that's just because of the loft if we look at the view we can set the deviation 0.05 and that'll clear that up and we've still got our boundary curves showing but that's how to loft using the curve on surface workbench to create more advanced lofts the easy way. Hope you enjoyed that video and I hope to see you again in the new one. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel then you can do so via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash paypal me forward slash Darren B E Stone or at coffee via ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content and that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header, on the about page, or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing to these videos. And I hope to see you again in the next one.